Alrighty, welcome everyone to the Virtual College Exploration Program in partnership with Colleges That Change Lives. This is the Clark University Information Session. But before I pass it over to the Clark team, I'm going to kick us off with some housekeeping items in case you haven't heard these yet. We do have more CTCL sessions through tomorrow evening, so feel free to check back on our uh, schedule if you're interested in registering for more sessions. And when you do register for these sessions, you get a barcode in that confirmation email but that barcode is not necessary for any of the virtual events that you participate in. We are recording all of these sessions and posting them to our website shortly after the session concludes. So whether you wanna rewatch or watch one you may have missed, um, just check back on our website for those updated recordings. And then finally, you will be able to see and hear the Clark team. They can't see or hear you all. This is webinar style format. So any questions you have throughout the presentation, feel free to type those into the Q&A box. Um, and the presenters will do their best to address those throughout the presentation. So I'm going to pass it over to Nick to get us started. Thanks so much. Thank you. And uh, welcome everyone to the presentation of Clark University. Uh, we're excited to have you join us today. My colleague, Terry Malone, is behind the scenes and is going to be helping us with the slides. Um, so you should be able to see the nice red challenge convention change our world. My name is Nick Porcella. I'm the Senior Assistant Director of Admissions at Clark University. This is my 10th year on campus. Five of that was as a student. I did get a bachelor's and a master's from Clark. We're now in my fifth year in the admissions office. Uh, I have a lovely team of students with me here today. They're going to introduce themselves. So I will start with Khadija. Hello, everyone. My name is Khadija. I am a junior at Clark, and I currently major in um, political science and minor in philosophy. Besides that, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm an international student from Germany. So that's just a little bit about me. Thanks so much. Sarah? Oh, Sarah, you're on mute. You're muted. Um, how about now? Yes, you're good. Hello, I'm Sarah. Um, I am a rising senior studying urban economic geography with a concentration of urban studies. And on campus, I am a stage manager for Clark Musical Theater. Thanks so much. And Carabo? Hi everyone, my name is Karabo. I'm a rising junior now at Clark. Uh, I'm a management major and an economics minor, and I'm also an international student from Botswana. Thank you. And uh, just a couple notes in the presentation to follow up on uh, what, what Janet said. Uh, next slide, please, how this works. Uh, questions, yes, please use the Q&A feature. Um, my students and I, we're, we're gonna um, happily take questions uh, in the Q&A feature throughout the presentation, but we're gonna be answering most of the questions at the end. We're gonna leave a big chunk of time at the end to tackle as many questions as we can. Uh, if you have any tech issues throughout, uh, feel free to uh, use that chat feature um, and we'll sort through as we need. Um, but without further ado, uh, we're gonna get started in our presentation. So first things first, um, just a couple quick notes from me before I turn it over to our students. Question about who is Clark and what is Clark? And this is a question that I find valuable whether you're looking at Clark for the first time or you've done some research already. First things first, uh, Clark was founded in 1887 as the first all-graduate psychology research college in the United States. And that's a mouthful, I understand that. But what's exciting about that identity is that Clark was founded as a research university first, and the liberal arts identity came second. What this means for Clark is we have a really great dual identity. We have a mix of that research university feel with uh, access to faculty uh, for hands-on learning and inquiry, as well as that liberal arts identity where students can get the chance to have small class sizes, take a breath in the depth of courses, uh, and of course, uh, be a part of a really nice, beautiful New England campus with a really great community. So we're gonna to touch on all those great facets uh, today in this presentation. We'll spend about 25 minutes on that, and then we'll jump into uh, the question and answer period. Next slide, please. But we're in 2020, and you know, obviously 1887 was uh, quite a bit long time ago. Uh, so this looks a little different today for Clark. Um, we have something on campus uh, today called liberal education and effective practice. You can just think of this as Clark's approach to a liberal arts education. The uh, students and I are gonna talk about this in four key areas today. Um, the term LEAP or liberal education and effective practice isn't made to, meant to be the main takeaway of the presentation today. Uh, but these four key areas and, and what make up the Clark experience, we think are more important. Uh, so we're gonna spend some time each on a first year intensive, the program of liberal studies, problems of practice courses and hands-on learning in general, as well as the LEAP capstone experience. First up, the first year intensive. The uh, first year intensive or FYI is a class every student will take in their first year uh, to introduce you to Clark level research and writing. 
And the great thing about the class is that you know, it's a small course, typically 15 or so first year students and a professor. Um, since the students are a little bit closer to this than I am, I'm going to actually ask uh, Sarah first to chat a little bit about her experience in the FYI. Sure. Uh, so I came into Clark completely undecided, no idea what I wanted to do. Uh, so my summer advisor said, well, just take a class that sounds interesting. So I took a course inside the theater department called How to Act Right on and Off Stage. And this class was 9 to 12 Friday morning, so a pretty good hunk of time. And the first half was focused on how to act right off stage. So it was all about uh, the transition into college, how we were eating, how we were sleeping, how we were doing with a roommate. Uh, we would meditate, we would do Zumba some days, um, and just overall talk about our well-being, uh, which was great because it was a class with just first year students. So it felt like a time where I could be really vulnerable about the changes that we were all going through. Um, and then the second half of the class was how to act right on stage. So we would do improv, sketch comedy, and our full, um, full semester program was to write, direct, produce, and perform a small play within a smaller group of our class. Our class was about nine students. So my group was three students. Um, and it was a great way to get to know other first year students in that, in that setting. Um, and then that professor was my advisor until I declared my major uh, as a sophomore. Uh, so it was great to have an advisor who really knew me since he knew me 9 a.m. on Friday morning. So it was, it was a different kind of Sarah for sure. Uh, so our advising periods would be, you know, how do you actually like Clark? Is this the place for you? Um, and what kind of classes do we want to explore next? So it felt like a really personal advising experience right off the bat. Thanks, Sarah. Next slide, please. And advising is a really good segue into our next talking point, which is the program of liberal studies. And at Clark, we are, as I mentioned, a liberal arts university. Um, that said, we don't have the core curriculum of, the, uh, of many traditional liberal arts colleges. And, and this is one thing that is really exciting to me about the Clark experience, uh, is that instead of having every student enroll in the same classes as sort of this core curriculum, uh, instead we say that we want you to take classes for your major majors, uh, or majors, because you can double major, that's totally fine. Uh, but we also want you to take classes in nine other thematic disciplines. And these are themes. You're not going to be boxed into taking the same class with every other student at any point in your Clark career. Um, and you do have choices. Um, perhaps better to explain how this could work and maybe an exciting example. Uh, Khadija, I'd love to hear uh, how you approach the PLS and maybe a particular favorite course you had. Yeah, um, so at the beginning when I first heard about the PLS, I got a little nervous <laughs> uh, because there were a few perspectives that I felt like I was not ready taking courses in. Um, so for instance, with the aesthetic one, I was like, okay, I'm not really that creative. I can't really draw that well. So let's see what I can come up with. Um, but the great thing about the PLS is, is that there is a super wide range of courses that you can take to fulfill these. So for instance, um, for the aesthetic one, I didn't have to take an art class. I actually took an art history class um, called African Art and Architecture, which was actually recommended to me by my advisor. I love her. She's awesome. Um, and she heard about the course and thought it sounded super interesting and really wanted me to take it so I could tell her about it. Um, and it was a great course. It was really interesting to kind of like just learn about the African diaspora as well as just a look at art through a political perspective. Um, seeing as our political science major, I was actually able to connect a lot of the things that I already learned in some of my political classes. So that was awesome. Um, another example for the natural scientific one, not a group great person in bio or chem either. However, I'm now taking astronomy 101 for next semester. So I'm very excited for that. Um, so just again, there's like so many different courses you can take. I know also for the aesthetic one, you can also take a jazz class um, and just like take like from a um, instrumental point, but also you can take a history class that looks at jazz. Um, so there's so many different ways you can fulfill these, which is definitely awesome. It gives you a wider perspective of all the great curriculum we have at Clark. Thanks, Khadija. And uh, you do have all four years to work your way through those themes, and, and that's part of the advising process at Clark. Transitioning to my, uh, perhaps my favorite part about Clark, I, I say that a lot, but this is really my favorite part about Clark, uh, is the problems of practice course mentality. Uh, Clark, uh, and, and for those of you who have looked at a lot of colleges already, there's probably some common terms you're hearing, things like experiential learning and hands-on learning. Uh, I'm excited to say Clark offers those. Um, but I think a little deeper than that, Clark is very intentional about how we create hands-on learning opportunities. There's many examples, but we're going to focus on one type that you, you could approach, and this is pop courses, if you will. Um, pop courses or problems of practice classes are uh, hands-on learning opportunities where you're 
uh, working with a small group of your peers in a class to tackle some real world problem or, or some big question. Uh, to give a couple examples before I turn it over to Carabo to maybe talk about his experience. Um, if you're a student maybe interested in the sciences, uh, you could take a class called small scale land conservation where you're doing work at a local piece of land that you get on the first day of class and you have to make an ethical recommendation of how to best use that land. Uh, and the final exam for that class is two parts. You submit a uh, lab report and a paper to your professor. You also send in the land easement report to the governor's office right here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, in another example, if you're maybe more uh, you know, in, into the arts, uh, you could take a course called gallery culture. This is a class where you get your own gallery space at the local Worcester Art Museum in our city. And our students will talk about the city we're located in in a bit. Uh, but this is a space where you'll work with your peers to fill the gallery with uh, art from other museums and you'll create a theme through the publications and the research associated with that and in some cases fill out grants or insurance claims. It's a really great way to learn how to be a curator by actually doing it. So you may get the idea that these pop courses are all flavored with the hands-on learning but, but through the lens of tackling big questions. Uh, almost all academic departments uh, have pop courses associated with them. We have close to 100 different pop courses. And this would supplement more traditional experiences like an internship or study abroad, uh, things we'll talk about a bit later. Uh, Carabo, I'd love to hear from you though. It doesn't have to be about pop, but what hands-on learning have you taken advantage of at Clark and how has that been valuable to you? Yeah, so mine, uh, like I mentioned, I'm a management major, so I wanted to take one related to management. And although it's not officially given the pop designation, I took intro to entrepreneurship with John Dobson. And the real hands-on learning aspect in that was that, you know, I kind of came into the class and everyone came into the class thinking like, okay, you know, what was interesting was that it didn't have a textbook. So we're wondering how it was going to work. We thought we'd go in and just learn some theory and stuff. Um, but, you know, you walk into the first class of the semester and John Dobson um, is at the door handing each person who walks in a dollar and you're walking, you're wondering what? I mean, like you sit down, you have the dollar in hand and he's like, so everyone has a dollar, right? Good that's my investment in your business that you're gonna start and run on campus. Each week you're gonna have different challenges um, that I'm going to set. And those challenges range from things like, so this week you're gonna take a classmate's business and make it better, try and make more money or, or be more successful. Success wasn't always measured by money in the class, although some people did make a lot of money that they get to keep, um, which is a nice perk of the class. Um, so you're typically running your own small business on campus and having different challenges set week by week by Professor Dobson that cover a lot of entrepreneurial aspects. So, you know, one week he'd say, um, like there was one where he say, start two social media channels um, for your business and next week report back. How did you drive traffic? How were sales through that social media channel? Did your sales increase? What could you have done better? Questions like that where you get some serious practical experience in running a small business. And so that was entrepreneurship, um, intro to entrepreneurship, as opposed to community-based entrepreneurship, which is up on the screen. Um, and yeah, that was my experience. Uh, and then next up, before we uh, transition a little bit into uh, life after Clark, uh, just a, a couple notes on a really um, fundamental part of the Clark experience called the Leap Culminating Capstone. Uh, it is also called the Leap Capstone or sometimes just the Capstone. So they're all synonymous. But this is an experience that every student will take part in. Uh, it's a self-designed uh, project that you'll uh, create in your junior and or senior year uh, to in some way demonstrate your mastery of Clark's learning objectives. Now, I view that really more as uh, an empowering opportunity. Uh, and for students, they actually have a lot of different ways that they can approach this. You could write a traditional thesis paper. That's always fun. Um, you could, uh, if you're maybe uh, arts inclined, uh, stage your own production that you wrote or create a documentary. Some programs have classes that you'll take uh, to fulfill the capstone experience and work on a project with your peers. Still, yes, yeah, some, some students will do an internship or spend longer studying abroad or come back and, and use that experience on campus. So as you might gather, there's dozens if not hundreds of ways to approach this capstone experience. The bottom line is that it's a required experience, but you get to be empowered to, to create it uh, the way that works best for you. Uh, Sarah, uh, as the rising senior uh, here, I'd love to get your take on what this may look like for you. Sure, well, I hate being the oldest uh, student in the room. That's awful. But um, I have a major and a concentration, so I'll be doing two capstones. And I already started the bulk of my concentration capstone. 
Uh, my concentration is urban studies. So they really want you to have a capstone that's either an internship or some sort of off of campus experience. Uh, so in the spring semester, I studied away, which is just study abroad, but you don't leave the country in Boston. And that program was mostly an internship uh, at a global nonprofit called Leading Cities, which took place downtown Boston. And its goal is to connect entrepreneurs and um, the most up and coming businesses to municipal governments so we could get more sustainability and more resiliency in our cities and our states um, and even regions across the world. Um, so I did that for my capstone and learned a lot about what it was like to be a city official from kind of the startup side, um, meshing public and private together, which was great because I am interested in working in municipal government, either in city planning or economic development. Uh, so that kind of focused um, on what I wanted to do as my career, but also works as my capstone for urban studies. Um, now that I'm back on campus, I'll be writing a paper about that experience and kind of reflecting on what I did learn. Um, but that was a more on hands capstone for sure. Thanks, Sarah. I'll have to check back later in the year and see how you're doing on it. Next slide, please. Uh, I know, especially as an admissions counselor, uh, you know, seeing students go through this process quite a bit that there's a lot of time and emotional energy that goes into the process, and we acknowledge that. Uh, and we know it's all leading to that, that next great step. Uh, so I'd like to spend just a brief moment talking about some opportunities of life after Clark. Uh, a couple key stats uh, to start, though. Um, in, I mentioned internships earlier as maybe more that traditional marker of hands-on learning. Um, so again, just one opportunity for hands-on learning at Clark. Uh, in terms of internships, 84% of our students have had an internship or similar experience before their senior year. Uh, what's nice is accessibility is there. So 100% of students can access those opportunities. It's just a matter of what best suits you and, and your uh, desires in your major and your overall interests. Uh, Clark's proudest point of achievement, mine too, uh, is that year over year, 98% of our student uh, is employed or in graduate school within six months of graduating. Um, so again, uh, something we're exceptionally proud of. Uh, and as you see on your screen here, uh, the fifth year accelerated master's program uh, is something that if you take nothing else away with you from this presentation, take away knowledge of fifth year, it's called. Uh, fifth year is an opportunity. Um, we're one of two colleges in the United States to offer uh, a program like this. If you've earned a B plus average sophomore through senior year while at Clark, you'll be eligible to take part in any one of these uh, 14 master's programs completely tuition free and in one calendar year. Yes. I said completely tuition free and in one calendar year. So it, it tends to attract a lot of students. All told about one in three students take advantage of this program uh, in their car careers. Next slide, please. Uh, and before I turn it over to our students to chat about student life, I'm just gonna spend maybe two, three minutes on admissions and financial aid. Um, first up, a little bit about what we look for. Um, Clark is very much a school oriented towards that we're interested in learning about you. We wanna know your story. Um, so if at all possible, as part of your application, highlight the qualities you can see on the screen here. Things like your curiosity about the world, uh, your interest in learning. We love students who love learning. Uh, your desire to engage with us and engage in our community. We want you to be an active member of our community when you get here. Uh, and finally, academic achievement. Obviously, you're going to, uh, you know, as part of the process, you'll send a transcript to us through your counselor or other means. Um, but we want to know more than that. We want to know that, that you're somebody interested in in, in diving deeply into material uh, and being thoughtful uh, and maybe you know having some leadership or, or creativity uh, experiences somewhere down the line. So as I like to say, please brag about yourself because you do a lot of amazing things and we wanna know about them. Next slide, please. A little bit about the admissions process um, for those who are currently thinking of applying to Clark. Um, we have uh, deadlines this uh, upcoming fall, uh, November 15th for early decision or early action. Uh, and then an early decision, uh, a second round of early decision rather in January, as well as the regular decision round also in January. Um, for those who, who may be unfamiliar or, or you know, have seen different colleges use different uh, processes, um, for Clark, early decision uh, is a binding offering. Um, so you know, that's something that you would apply to uh, in the case that Clark is really, really your top choice, um, whereas early action and regular decision are non-binding rounds. So we're happy to answer more questions on those a little bit later on. In terms of uh, required materials, um, we do uh, require an application, uh, two letters of recommendation, uh, and a high school transcript, obviously. Um, you do not need to send us your standardized test scores. You're welcome to. Um, we do not consider them for merit uh, or financial aid. We would just be looking at your test scores for your admissions application. And even then, it's typically not 
the priority. In fact, it's not the priority. Um, so just things to keep in mind as you go about the process. And uh, finally, before I turn it over to our students um, on the financial aid piece, Clark does run merit-based aid and need-based aid programs. All students, whether you're a US or international student, um, you're all automatically considered for merit-based aid when you apply. Nothing separate you have to do. In terms of need-based aid, um, for US uh, students, we would require a FAFSA and a CSS profile. If you're applying internationally, an interna international student, we would just require the CSS profile. Happy to clarify that later, um, but again, it, it just depends on citizenship. In terms of cost, uh, Clark is a private university in, uh, in Worcester, Massachusetts, in the Northeast. Uh, costs are about $58,000 per year for everything, room, board, tuition fees. Um, but that said, uh, we have very few students paying that rate. In fact, 85% uh, or more students receive some, uh, one or multiple forms of aid each year. Uh, so don't let that dissuade you from applying. We, we want to consider your application. And in fact, um, I always like to know um, for this coming year, we do not have an application fee. We recognize that uh, it's particularly a challenging time in the world. Um, so we're trying to do our part wherever possible to make the process easier for you. So no application fee for this fall 2021 cycle. And again, happy to answer questions on that. So I've talked enough. I'm gonna turn it over to our students to chat about the student life piece. I'm gonna step back for just a minute. We'll be back for the question and answer segment in five or six minutes. All right, you take it away. All right, yeah, so I'm just gonna talk about life in Worcester. Uh, so Worcester is a very diverse city and you can really see that in all the different diverse restaurants that we have super close to our campus. Super close is really just a 10 minute walk, which is already Clark far as we would say it. Um, one of my favorite restaurants is called Delat, which is a Vietnamese place. And I just so happen to move closer to it now um, because I actually live off campus now, so yeah. Uh, but we're also a very community-based city. So um, we actually have 11 to 12 different organizations in Worcester, um, 75 of our Clark students tend to also volunteer slash work with these organizations. This is not only great because we really want to be part of the community in Worcester, um, but also you just like get out there and meet the citizens um, and maybe even grab some internship opportunities. So that's always awesome as well. Uh, we also have a bunch of different parks and lakes in Worcester, which is especially nice right now you can go there, social distance, and just enjoy the summer. Um, we also have a bunch of cool thrift stores, which I always like to highlight because it's so, such a like fun activity to do with your friends. Um, but if you're really more looking into like events that are happening in Worcester, Shrewsbury Street is the way to go. Um, it's just like a big street that we have, and it's um, full of like restaurants, cafes, but also a lot of events. Um, one of them is Stars on the Street, which is mainly an art festival, which is where Worcester citizens, as well as Clark students also, um, just present their artwork in different ways. There's music, there are food trucks, and so there are a lot of fun things to do. And there are a lot of other events on Shrewsbury Street as well. I believe there's also food festivals, so that's definitely always worth checking out. Um, and last but not least, we also have a lot of, um, we have the Worcester Museum, which is free for Clark students actually, and also a few music halls right near um, as well, where sometimes some of our a cappella groups actually perform, um, but we also have like more famous uh, performers coming in. Uh, so that's also a very fun way to spend your time in Worcester. Yeah. So if you're not overwhelmed with everything going on outside of Clark, we also have over 180 clubs and organizations on campus. Um, so there's definitely a lot to do. Uh, we don't have Greek life and we don't have a football team. So really most of the social life, especially as first year students, is really geared around which clubs and organizations you get into. Um, and it was one of the most exciting and uh, nerve wracking days of my first year experience was the uh, club fair, which is the picture you'll see you're going to see right now. And that's when all of the clubs and organizations uh, have little tables set out, usually a mailing list and candy, trying to get you to join their clubs. And this picture is pretty sentimental to me because three out of five of these students were actually in Clark Musical Theater uh, my first semester. And they are some of the upperclassmen that really welcomed me in with open arms. And Clark Musical Theater became one of my little families inside of campus. And that's really what it is to join a club. Um, kind of test it out in the beginning, figure out which ones are your favorites, and then spend a lot of time, especially on the weekends, uh, with those people in the club. So some people will ask, um, you know, how you balance social life and clubs and all the other things you have going on. But I think a lot of the times it's the same thing to, to be in a club and to have those friends there and be a part of your social life. 
Thanks. And then we have study abroad and away. So if you're not too overwhelmed with Worcester and Clark, you also have the entire world. So we have over 50 programs in over 30 countries. And these can look like a lot of different things. Um, I am a senior now. So last year as a junior, a lot of my friends were studying abroad. I had a friend in Seville, Spain, doing a program that was a mix of a homestay and also a direct enrollment in another university. I had a friend in Argentina uh, who was doing more of a homestay slash cultural immersion program. I had a friend in Senegal, Africa, who was doing an internship there. I had a friend in Germany, Italy, France, England, and I was in Boston doing a study away program, uh, which was also more internship based, uh, living in an apartment in Boston. The best thing about those 50 programs is the, they're all Clark affiliated. So that means you'll always get a full semester of credit for your time there and financial aid will carry over if you're a domestic student. Uh, so that is the perk of doing one of those programs. You could also work with the study abroad in a way office to do a non Clark affiliated program or some other kind of off campus experience uh, for a semester. But um, other than the few experiences I talked about, you could also do research uh, while you're studying abroad. And looking at athletics, Clark is a Division Three school um, competing in the New England Women's and Men's Athletic Conference. We do have 17 varsity sports, um, excluding football, unfortunately. Um, my friend Osborne likes to joke that we're undefeated in football because of that. Um, and so we are a school that also recruits athletes, and it's also possible to walk onto a team, although it's becoming more difficult because we're recruiting more athletes. So if you're interested in recruiting for athletics, definitely get in touch with the coaches. They love talking to prospective students and we love helping prospective athletes. If you're not ready for that um, varsity level, we also have about 10 club sports, which is kind of a step down in competition. Um, you're still playing against other schools. I know, for example, like the club soccer team plays against the Harvard club um, and others in the area too. Um, so still a step down, playing against other schools, still pretty competitive, but um, you know, you don't have a coach breathing down your neck every day and, you know, you're not given summer conditioning packets um, or hopefully you're not. And then um, a further step down is also the intramural level. We have um, about eight or nine intramural sports, um, which are as serious or as unserious as you want them to be. That's just Clark students versus Clark students getting together to play a sport they love. We have two um, athletic facilities. Um, one is the Nella Athletics, uh, uh, Nella Athletic Center, which houses mostly the indoor um, athletic facilities. So we have two full-size basketball courts, a full competition size swimming pool, eight racquetball and squash courts, and also some studio spaces for studio-based physical activities like yoga, dance, martial arts, um, things like that that you can get involved in through clubs. Um, and it also has the Bigman Fitness Center, which is our on-campus gym. Um, the other athletic facility, the Dolan Fieldhouse, which is more of the outdoor um, sports. So it has our soccer field, baseball field, multi-purpose field, the tennis courts, and also two full-size um, indoor basketball courts there. And for the most part, um, all athletic facilities are used recreationally by students too. So the ordinary student, um, like myself, uh, like Khadija, like Sarah, can use um, any facility as well. Um, it's not just reserved for um, athletes. Well, and uh, look at that, we did it. We, we met the mark of just under 30 minutes. So this means we've got our 15 minutes for some questions at this point. So um, two things with that. Um, first, we're going to get to as many questions as we can. We do have a lot of students registered, which we're thrilled by. Um, if we don't get to your question and you still want to ask it, please email the, the email you see on your screen, admissions at clarku.edu. Um, but second, let's just jump right in. I'm going to go uh, just sort of uh, asking uh, our three students, this in the order I see you here. Um, so Khadija, I'll give you this first question. It's just generally about housing. Can you talk about the housing available for students in general? and speak to if housing is guaranteed for all four years. Yeah, um, so housing is required for first years and second years. So that means your first two years, you will be living off campus and uh, on campus, excuse me. Um, after that, I believe, I'm not sure about the exact numbers, but I believe um, around 25 to 30% um, live off campus their junior year. Uh, so this would include myself right now. So I just moved off campus after the two years. And then I believe 50% of seniors live off campus um, after that. However, the last two years housing is not guaranteed, but I have not heard of any student who wasn't able to live on campus if they wanted to live on campus. Uh, most people also just end up being residential advisors, uh, which is also a great way to just stay on campus. Um, but yeah, that's all I know. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, and I'll go to Sarah because you're next on my screen, but if uh, Prabhu or Khadija, you um, feel more comfortable with the question, uh, let me know. Uh, but uh, Sarah, our question is, um, can, you, can you talk about your science classes? Um, and I, I'd love to hear that from you, um, but anybody else is welcome to jump in. Uh, sure, science. Well, we do have STEM majors. Um, so we have things like biology, chemistry, physics, um, not going to try to name them all, computer science. Um, I personally just took astronomy as my science perspective, um, but there are a lot of different science classes to choose from, uh, different majors and minors. I can't say I'm the best suited to answer this question as I'm more of a, a softer science as a geography student, um, but we do have some GIS classes that I would love to speak about that are more geography based that still count as science. Yeah, and, and uh, I think, you know, one note to add is um, a major like biology is usually Clark's second largest major. So we are at liberal arts and sciences college, meaning that you'll have access to, uh, you know, usually 35 different majors. Uh, it's pretty equally broken down between sciences, social sciences, arts, and humanities. Uh, Karabo, you're next on my screen. Um, can you speak to what opportunities or programs there are for Clarkies who are interested maybe in law or social justice? Yeah, for sure. Um, for law, there is a pre-law advising program and a lot of um, pre-law students, um, although like there's no, you probably know that there's no required major to get into law school. Um, there are some majors that put you on the right track. So Clark does offer poli-sci, history, um, English, uh, those sort of majors, but also like you could get involved in certain clubs. There is uh, the mock trial club and the model UN club. Those are the two major ones for people interested in law. And in terms of social justice, um, social justice, I think, is a keen interest of many Clark students. And um, that interest can be taken into a bunch of clubs, too. Um, a lot of your interests will be explored through your clubs. And so in terms of social justice, we have plenty of social justice clubs um, or clubs that have a goal that is um, oriented towards social justice. You have the Black Student Union, um, Clark Climate Justice, the Clark Sustainability Collaborative. Um, uh, clubs that promote menstrual equity, um, NARAL, which is the pro-choice club on campus. Um, there's just so many that I wish, you know, I could take the whole info session trying to think of them, of them all. But any sort of progressive social justice cause you can think of, there probably is a club for that um, on campus. Thank you. And uh, the next question is one I'll take, and, and same thing, I could spend an hour talking about this, but I'll try and do it in just a minute. What do you look for in a personal essay? Uh, great question. Um, so when we're reading essays, um, a few of the, the main takeaways. Um, I love to read essays that tell me something that I don't see elsewhere in the application. So for instance, if you spend a lot of time uh, in your activity section talking about uh, your love of chess and, and you know, a chess club and all that, that's great. I'd focus your energy and your essay on, on something else. Um, so what I like to see is a student uh, talk uh, about themselves um, versus you know, an essay that talks about a grandparent or a friend or a cousin. Um, I value essays where the student, uh, you know, recognizes that they're writing to a human being. Um, I'm a human and I'm reading the essay. Um, so I love descriptive language and imagery and uh, I like good writing. So, you know, I think that and you can make just about any theme work. It's just about speaking true to yourself uh, and, and, you know, being a little bold. That's what I encourage. So, but again, I could spend an hour on that and, and actually I have at some high school. So um, if you see me at your virtual high school visit this fall, we can talk more. Uh, Khadija, next question for you. Um, can you talk about double majors? Um, a question specifically asked about uh, different uh, schools um, on campus, but, but since we don't have different colleges on Clark's campus, if you can just speak generally to what the double majoring process would look like. Yeah, um, so you can definitely double major in almost anything that you want to. Uh, I think the only like obstacle really would be if you decide last minute that you would double major and then kind of just like have to fit all the different credits in. But you can double major in music and physics. There's definitely no harm in there, whatever it is of your interest. Um, I was also personally thinking of double majoring just because it's there's so many different interesting classes that I want to take. Um, I only decided against it so I can spend more time on my research and kind of like focus more on that. However, if that's something you want to do, um, professors as well as your advisor are super supportive. So they really break down for you what are some of the classes that you have to take. Maybe some of the classes actually go for both majors or major and a minor. Um, I kind of really like break down for you how can you 
best double major without overwhelming yourself. So they will be honest with you and can tell you, okay, this might be a lot, but I think you can do it if you do it X, Y, Z. Um, so there's a lot of academic support in order to really make it possible for you to study whatever you want to study. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, we uh, I have a couple of questions on this one. I think this is a quick answer, but um, are, ca are cars allowed on campus? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Um, so you can have a car all four years on campus. We have a parking garage. We also have uh, less expensive just places to park your car and get a permit. Uh, some people even park on the street if it's more of a short term period. Um, I would say you don't necessarily need a car. I only brought my car this year now that I'm living uh, off campus as a senior. The other three years I was perfectly fine um, on campus without a car. There is um, a great public transportation system in Worcester, so I would take the city bus places. It stops right in front of the school. Uh, I'd also use Uber and Lyfts to get places that are further on campus or off campus. Sorry, uh, Clark also offers an, a safety van uh, escort service. So that's a van that could take you anywhere within a quarter mile radius of the school between 4 p.m. and 4 a.m. Uh, you just call a number and they pick you up or drop you off wherever you are. And that includes things like the CVS and the par uh, Price Chopper, a uh, bunch of different restaurants in the area, basically all of the off-campus housing. I would personally use it to go to CVS at 3 a.m. to get Ben and Jerry's. Um, so that's always available. And then we're about an eight minute drive uh, to Union Station, which is downtown Worcester. And that has Peter Pan and Greyhound buses that really take you anywhere on the East Coast and the commuter rail to Boston, which is really cheap and about an hour and a half commute there. Um, and we also have the Worcester Airport, which can take you to Chicago, Florida, New York, Boston, all of those places. So I always felt like I could get home to Connecticut if I needed to uh, pretty easily. And I could definitely get around Worcester um, and see everything I wanted to there. Thank you. Rob, well, the next one's for you, um, mostly because you just did such a nice job talking about athletics. Um, can you just briefly add to um, whether uh, athletes have their own facilities or if they're all shared? Yeah, I like answering athletics questions because I like to consider myself a non-athletic athlete. Um, and so for the most part, um, uh, facilities are shared, but there are some varsity specific um, facilities. There is the varsity weight room. Um, there are some team specific rooms. There's the rowing room with like the machines and the ergs. And the athletics department also works with teams um, to get them uh, off-campus training centers. Um, often teams would use off-campus gyms um, as part of like team bonding, like off-campus gyms and off-campus facilities um, and shared with other schools too. Thank you. Uh, next one I'll take is about the application process. Um, beyond the Common App, any requirements needed to apply? Um, really, it's, it's at the basis, uh, the Common Application and then um, some materials within that. So we would need obviously your transcripts, uh, you know, letters of recommendation, those sorts of things. Uh, your essay, uh, list of extracurricular activities, uh, and then on top of that, if you want to send your test scores, as I said, you can, but we, we don't consider them um, very much in the process and in fact, don't at all for uh, the admissions and financial aid process. Um, it's all on our website too. Um, so if you want to check it out on the apply section of our website, uh, it goes into a little more depth than we can here. Uh, Khadija, um, if you know the answer to this, do we have a competitive policy debate team? Um, as far as I know, I think Rob already touched on this. We do have a mock trial team and we have Model UN, which kind of like goes into the category of having a debate team. Um, I don't think we have a specific policy debate team as far as I know, but anyone correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. That sounds right to me. I know the Model UN and mock trial and, and debate are probably the key takeaways. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, uh, do, we, uh, do we offer robotics coursework? Oh, I'm not familiar with any robotics courses. Again, if anyone knows of anything, um, there might be more of a, a low-key club that does robotics work, but I'm not sure of anything on the academic level. Actually, I wonder if you could speak a little bit to the makerspace, because I know you said you, you had, mm -hmm. had some friends in that, that club mm -hmm. that might be of interest. Yeah, for sure. If anyone remembers the picture from clubs and organization slide way back when, um, that was for the Makerspace Club, which was very recently founded at Clark. Um, and that took place in a few different buildings on campus. Um, and that was really a space to just make stuff together. Um, kind of a mix of engineering and crafting and woodworking and all of those things. So they would make things like robots, but also make things like uh, out of wood and other materials there. And it was um, definitely more low key than an academic level, um, just making things together and, and kind of 
figuring out things as they went along. So it was really fun. Um, and I would kind of peek in on them sometimes because our woodworking shop has a lot of windows outside. Um, but I never really thought I was cool enough to join. Thank you. So we have about two minutes left before I turn it back over to Jen to do the outro. Um, so I'm just gonna ask a couple more questions of our students. Again, if you have more questions that don't get answered or wanna know more, you can email us at admissions at clarku.edu anytime. We'd be thrilled to answer more. Um, Carabo, uh, can you talk a little bit about part-time jobs and what that could look like at Clark? Yeah, so Clark does support a lot of students through plenty of part-time jobs. A lot of them involve proctoring and they sort of center around the idea that, you know, we understand that you are students, so you would have some work. So the library has a lot of jobs for students. Um, the admissions office hires a bunch of students as well, just like me, Khadija, Sarah. Um, a bunch of buildings, there are a bunch of athletic jobs too, available for athletes, um, game assistants, ball people, ball collectors, um, announcers, mascots, uh, gym proctors. Um, there's just so much. You can also get involved in um, a couple of the cafes on campus or help out in dining services. There are a bunch. I wish I knew the specific number of students who are employed on campus. Um, and if you're a US citizen, of course, you are more than free to get a part-time job off campus. There are a bunch of areas. Worcester is a city, so there are a bunch of businesses that are always hiring students. Um, even in the pandemic, a bunch of people working at Target, local supermarkets, even some right in the neighborhood, um, McDonald's, Wendy's, always hiring. Um, and so those are some opportunities for employment. Thank you. And before I turn it back over to Jen, uh, I just want to give uh, everybody who has questions remaining as much info as I can. Um, so this might be a little more rapid fire, but at least give you a taste. Um, so we have a question about can non-majors participate in dance? Absolutely. Um, we value that in really all the programs, especially in the arts. Um, can you talk about the acceptance, please? Uh, Clark's acceptance rate is about 47%. Um, so, you know, we're, we're a moderately selective university. Um, so we have a question about the combined engineering major. Um, we do have a 3-2 engineering partnership with Columbia. Um, I encourage you to check out the 3-2 partnership section of the website to learn more about that. But it is a pretty rigorous program. It's fun, but it's rigorous. Um, and then a question about the weather. Uh, as a reference point, student says that uh, they live in Minnesota. Um, I think it's a little warmer than Minnesota, um, but it's still cold. We, we are consistently in the five most snowiest cities in the country. So if you like snow, or you've never seen snow and you think you'd like it, we could be a good fit, um, but maybe a little bit warmer than Minnesota. Uh, and then let's see, how's the Clark History Program? Again, I could spend an hour on this. Clark History Program is great. It's one of the five humanities majors, very small programs. Every student can expect to be a part of the Writing History Seminar. Um, gives you a chance to um, really tackle what it means to write history through the lens of uh, international or, uh, or US based history. So again, those are all a taste, but I did want to make sure we got as many answers as possible out there. Uh, at this point, we have a minute and a half left and I know I'm supposed to turn it back over to Jen or else I get in trouble and I don't want to do that. Um, so I'll thank everyone for being here. Um, thank you for your time and uh, wishing you all well. So Jen, you can take it over from here. All righty, team. Thank you so much, Nick, for staying on time. <laughs> um, you guys did a great job. And, and, and again, we appreciate your time for being here to share all this great information with the audience. Um, so as you exit the Zoom webinar, you will be taken to a quick survey, only four questions. We'd love to hear your feedback regarding this particular session. We will ensure the Clark team gets your information as well as all the questions that were submitted throughout the session. And then as I alluded to in the beginning, there's more sessions with CTCL through tomorrow evening and all of our recordings will be posted on our website shortly. So I hope everyone has a fantastic morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you may be. And once again, thank you so much to the Clark team for spending their time with us. Have a great day.